Hi everyone, Andy Glass here with Glass Impressions. Today we're going to do our first CNC project. It's going to be a spoil board. Stick around, hope you enjoy. This video is sponsored by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. Create with confidence. Spoil boards are very important in a CNC operation as it protects your factory metal surface for any operation that goes completely through your material. It's going to ding up your spoil board and not your metal surface. If you put in a spoil board bit or any straight bit and run a pocketing tool path on your surface like I did, it's going to make it nice and parallel to your gantry. This is very important for inlay work and engravings. I start by cutting a full sheet of 3 quarter inch MDF to rough width of the table saw. I then cut the leftovers and some scraps to double up the thickness. I check that my scrap material will cover the first sheet of MDF. I went with regular yellow wood glue to glue the sheets together. In hindsight I could have used contact cement and avoided the trouble of using screws as clamps. I didn't have any contact cement on hand so I guess I saved a little money. I applied the glue with a small paint roller. I try to get it as thick as possible. Once applied, I move the top two halves in place and use small 23 gauge pin nails in the corners to keep them from slotting around as I pre-drilled and drove the pan head screws in. I don't have a vacuum bag or clamps with a large enough throat capacity to clamp these up. I decided I could use a fair number of pan head screws to apply the clamping pressure. After cutting to final dimensions, I inspected the glue joint. It was nice and tight. The screws did an excellent job. Once dried, I removed all the screws and used my jigsaw to cut it to rough length. I used my sliding crosscut accessory on my table saw to cut it to final length. I removed the crosscut fence and cut it to final width. I designed a pattern for a series of holes for bolting into the CNC and also for threaded inserts to be used for clamping. Once the pattern was laid out, I used a Forstner bit to drill a countersunk hole for the washer and bolt to hold it to the table. Then I used a brad point drill bit to drill the through hole. I then used a brad point drill bit to drill a pilot hole for the threaded inserts. I used a special bit to drive the inserts. Once all the holes for the mounting hardware and the inserts were completed, I moved the spoil board to the CNC and used a long nose marking pen to mark where I need to put the bolts so they line up with the holes. Getting all the holes to line up was a bit tricky, but I did countersink them so that helped quite a bit. I then could drop a washer and a lock nut into all the hold down holes and secure the spoil board to the table. There is about a quarter inch from the top of the table to the top of the nut. Plenty of room for a few passes on the CNC to freshen up the spoil board. I installed quite a few bolts to hold it to the table. I didn't want it going anywhere and I also wanted it firmly held to the table when applying pressure to the threaded inserts. I use a Z0 touch plate to zero out the spoil board bit. It is now time to make a 1 16th inch pass with a 1.5 diameter spoil board bit. A regular straight bit or spiral bit would work just fine. The larger the bit, the less amount of time it's going to take to do the spoil board. At the beginning I had the dust boot removed for video purposes. I did my best with the shop back, but the MDF is dusty stuff. Eventually I put the dust boot back on. At that point I could sit back and let the CNC do all the heavy lifting.
Now that the spoil board is complete, I want to show you a few different clamping options. A crude but simple and effective way to hold your material to your spoil board is a wood screw. Simply drive it through your material and tighten it to your spoil board. During the build video, you saw me strategically place threaded inserts throughout the spoil board. This is so we can use hold downs, either commercially made ones like these available from rockler.com, they're aluminum, or you can use some homemade ones. Simply insert the bolt into the threaded insert and tighten down to apply pressure to your workpiece. Typically three to four of these is sufficient enough to hold your workpiece. Another fast and easy solution to hold down your material is to use double sided tape. Simply apply it to your workpiece, remove the protected film, and apply pressure down to your spoil board. Another added benefit to the double sided tape is if you're removing anything inside, the double sided tape will keep it in place so it doesn't rattle around and hit your bit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and gave you a little insight on how to make a CNC spoil board and some creative ways to hold down your material to that spoil board. If you guys enjoyed this video, please smash the like button, share, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.